Welcome to the Center Mid Philosopher. This episode is brought to you by Augustus Royale Fashion. Life's not black and white, it's gray, and gray is beautiful. Check out the brand below in the link. week of the center mid philosopher have a extremely special guest uh justin map joining me uh former uh united states men's national player about 16 caps mls all 11 um played for many teams i, I always remember him fondly from those chicago fire years uh playing alongside my buddy logan pauls who i played with many others of course played for dc united philadelphia union montreal impact sporting kansas city um and again as i was just saying to him but i'll say in front of god and country one of the best dribblers i've ever seen best uh 1v1 left footers there ever were and uh it's just an honor and a pleasure to have you thank you for coming on thanks uh happy to be here thanks for having me looking forward to it yeah man so um it's just it's a, pl a pleasure to have you and just kind of want to do some at the water cooler talk with you here first um you know uh i don't I, how much of the women's world cup have you been able to catch uh kind of bits and pieces with the weird times and uh just with my schedule um obviously i've tried to mainly catch the u.s games um haven't seen all 90 minutes of all three of those so far but um tried to watch those obviously the highlights if i didn't see it but uh it's been a little tricky with the uh with the the time difference um but yeah it's been some pretty good stuff so far and uh moving to the knockout round so it should be interesting yeah it is. they're struggling a little bit but i think they'll find their footing um and uh other big news going on uh messy messy mania uh have you been able to catch uh, any of his d uh, debut games I've watched every second of, of every game, so consider me uh, all in on Messi mania. So um, obviously it's been phenomenal what he's done the first three games and uh, just for the league and the eyes on it, uh, I've, I'm sure it's everything the league has hoped for and even more. So um, I'm interested to see how it all plays out. Yeah, he's been killing it. I'm super pumped. And um, I, uh, you know, I, it's kind of mind blowing how incredible it's been, but it for the Atlanta United game was a little bit teetering on like oh is this maybe not making the league look so good because it kind of looks like they weren't even trying but then again you know how well he's come out and started it's 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 been uh it's been pretty incredible uh where would you put that first goal he had against Cruz Azul how would you rank that amongst your favorite Messi memories all time man he's uh obviously been watching his whole career and um I don't know if you can rank I mean that's almost like a that's almost like an average goal for him. You know, he's done that. I feel like I've seen that free kick a thousand times. Yeah. Um, but just to see him, I think the thing I took away the most from it was how he celebrated it. And I mean, think of the big goals, big games he's played in his career and he's in MLS now and he celebrated that like he's like he won the World Cup. So I think for me to see his passion so far, you know, he's chirping at players last night. Um, yeah. Watched him for two years at PSG. I don't think I saw him get fired up one time. So mm -hmm. like, to see him happy and uh, engaged, um, you know, for as big of a player as he is, I think that's the most I've taken away from it. And, um, yeah, but that first goal, I, I knew as soon as they got that free kick, I said, you know, it's scripted, it's meant to be, and yeah. uh, obviously buried it. So um, I was loving it. <laughs> yeah, it was, I mean, it was ridiculous. And I'm glad you touched on um, – I feel like he's sort of refound the joy of the game a little bit. Like when he ran over and hugged his three sons – I mean, I don't think I've, I've never really seen him do that, and I feel like he he seems to the PSG years just seemed his fans are brutal over there and um, whistling and whatnot, and so I, I I do think it's cool that you picked up on that as well because I've seen that too. Um, so I've been super glued to the League's Cup. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm super into it. I'm I've been loving it. Have you been watching a bunch of that as well? I have. It's been fun, kind of refreshing. Obviously, first year they've done it. So uh, I've watched a lot of the games. Um, I watched the Columbus America game and mm -hmm. um, the, U the the U.S. The uh, MLS team sides have got some good results. Yep. Um, you know, so I think these knockout rounds will be pretty interesting. And, you know, uh, Messi heading to Dallas on Sunday. So I've loved it. It's kind of been a breath of fresh air. And, you know, you always get the comparisons between the two leagues. And mm -hmm. 
everyone's always going to have excuses about form home away, but, um, I've loved it. And, um, you know, I think these next couple of weeks can be pretty cool. So, yeah. So when you were playing, um, if memory serves, was that back when they, it was kind of similar with, was it the super Liga? Is that what they were doing then? Yeah, it was something like that. I feel like it wasn't every, every team wasn't involved. I don't, I don't remember the exact format, but there was something similar. Um, but it wasn't like a complete league for MLS first league MX. Um, yeah. But we did play some some uh, League MX teams, and I forget the format or how you got into the tournament, but it was much smaller scale. Yeah. Um, but but same idea, yes. Did you? What teams did you end up getting to play against? If you can. I forget who we played, but I know we played. Uh, who, we played someone at uh, Toyota Park um, in Bridgeview in the finals of it, um, and went into penalties, and we lost in penalties. But I, I can't remember if it was Pachuca or, or who it was. Um, but we did make it to the final, hosted it in Chicago, um, and I know we lost in penalties. So I would have to. It's been so so long, but uh, but yeah. Well, and you know when I had um, when I had Logan on, I was talking to him about that those Chicago Fire teams, and you. I mean, you've been on a lot of legendary teams, but there was so many strong personalities on that Chicago Fire team. Um, and I, you know, I'm curious to, to get your take on, you know, I asked him like, you know, th- who were some of the bigger personalities in the locker room? Like, or like, yes, yeah, so I'd ask you, like, who were some of the alphas in that locker room? Who were some of the players you admired and who were some of the ones that mentored you the most? Yeah, I, I think I was very fortunate. I, I get asked, you know, what's the best team you ever played on? And, um, you know, whether it was the best or not, and, and I would put it up there top two or three for sure. Uh, my very first year in Chicago, uh, Logan's first year as well, I'd just been traded from D.C. Mm-hmm. You know, I show up and, you know, you have uh, in the midfield, you have Chris Armas, Jesse Mars, and you can just kind of look and see where these players that I'm mentioning are at today. They're all in leadership roles, coaching, mm-hmm. front office. Uh, you have Jim Curtin in the back, I mean, head coach. So, it kind of makes sense that those guys then have gone on to do what they do now. But yeah, Jim Curtin, Chris Armas, Jesse Marsh, you had Carlos Bocanegra, Ante Razov, Beasley. He was younger then, but I mean, um, CJ Brown. So, I mean, I think that first Chicago 2003 was, you know, just the players I just named there. And I'm sure I'm missing a few, um, but some of those leaders, I think they kind of made me grow up pretty quick and teach me what it was to be a, a professional um we made the MLS cup that year and won the supporter shield so um i look on that squad specifically pretty fondly yeah no, that's such an incredible team and i know i don't know if you overlapped with jim Curtin in there anywhere too yeah yeah i mean jim was there and uh that was logan's first year i remember meeting logan in the airport we were both flying to chicago from somewhere and I had no idea you know i just knew he, oh you're from north carolina mississippi so we kind of had a little southern connection sure um, and obviously spent a lot of time there together. Um, and Logan became kind of one of those figures in his time as well, um, obviously being at the club forever. So Yeah. Yeah, I mean, just talk about, like, those are a lot of those personalities are some of the, the biggest leaders in the game now, like not just in America but globally. I mean, look, look at Jesse sure. Marsh. And um, so it's just incredible that you got to, to play with those guys. Um, going back to the messy thing a little bit, in terms of MLS in the league and, you know, people are using the term, you know, the messy effect a lot and, you know, how it could, it could change the league. Like what are two or three things that you're hoping him playing here will change the league? Like what, what are you hoping that will get out of this? Well, obviously it's just more eyes, Um, you know, whether, you, you know, some people think, and, you know, I think, the league has grown um, tenfold, obviously, from when I came into it and teams, passionate fan bases, et cetera. Um, we've made great strides. I just think it'll bring in, hopefully, the more mainstream, maybe someone who's a, maybe casual, watches the World Cup every now and then, that now they'll actually tune into maybe not all the league, but at least his games. And if you can convert some of those fans, even after he leaves, hey, okay, I enjoyed that. Um, you know, now you see Sports Center and other uh, services that – usually won't show highlights of MLS giving us um, some props because Messi's there. So I think it's just going to bring more overall awareness and hopefully we'll convert some of the, you know, people who aren't super into MLS. Maybe they watch leagues overseas and say, hey, the quality is actually not that bad. Um, and, you know, hopefully bring more people aboard. So 
that would be one. And um, yeah, I don't know. Obviously, uh, anywhere he goes, it's going to be crazy. I'm, you know, the, the messy tour or whatever, whatever his uh, away games are. I know I'm going to go see him in Chicago uh, nice. in October. Um, nice. I'll probably, I'll probably see Logan up there at that time, some of the ex-players. So nice. Yeah, it's just going to be kind of a circus wherever he goes, but just bringing awareness to, to MLS, um, to, you know, some awareness that maybe some, like I said, some people around the country uh, don't normally tune in. Yeah, I, and I hope he – I'm just wondering if it's time for the, the owners and the league on the whole to start to – you know, I'm curious for you as a former player, like is it time to say we might need more than three DPs on per yeah. team? Like, That's good. I'm glad you touched on that. Yeah, I, I had talking with the buddy about that yesterday, actually, and I, I didn't think about that aspect of it. But I think, you know, it's kind of similar when Beckham came in. Um, the DB, DPs kind of came about, and, you know, that was great for them. And I feel like now this is even another stepping stone that you really got to capitalize on. And you hear it from some owners already, hey, we're ready to spend more. And, you know, I think so. I read on Twitter someone threw out there, okay, maybe not completely wide open, fine, but maybe raise the salary cap to twenty million, yep. and maybe add a fourth DP. You yep. know, but just more quality where Messi's not playing with a guy out of college that's making eighty grand. It's just strange, right? Uh, not to college, but if you can raise ten, fifteen million in the cap, now your overall player uh, one to eleven uh, or one to twenty, your depth is just much better. Um, maybe add a fourth DP, and mm -hmm. I think the majority of the teams would be aboard. But uh, I think it's time. If not now, um, it's when. when it's yeah, I mean, they got to do it. And, I mean, you know, I, another outcome I'm hoping – I mean, I, could, I would love to see f it, another, maybe even five DPs. I mean, that that might sure. be too – but, like, one thing that has improved drastically is, like, the average salary has increased by, like, 41% since 2018. Sure. So it was, like – I don't know, maybe three fifty, something like that. And now it's kind of hovering around five hundred thousand. You know, maybe the another messy effect is that that it, you know, in three or four years the average salary is a million. You know, and yeah. you know, EPL, sure. we're not gonna get to EPL where it's like two or three million, but I mean, you know, you I, I hope that it it enables, like you said, the the guys right out of college that are, you know, I remember when we were coming along, you know, I knew kids make 30 40 a year you know yeah. and now they're not making 80 90 maybe they're making two or three hundred thousand dollars like that's the minimum you know so that it just increases that quality all the way from the bottom up is something yeah. i hope happens i agree and i think uh i think it'll happen you know whether it's this winter or you know hope sooner or maybe a year but um i think it's bound to happen now that he's here and um just help the quality overall so yeah, you know, his, uh, another thing I, I asked, uh, like, Eddie Robinson and um, Logan and uh, Will Hesper and a bunch of these guys that I used to play with here in yeah. North Carolina, um, you know, the early days of the MLS, and, and you're one of those guys, too. You were carrying the yeah. torch. You know, I just wondered if you had any kind of funny or interesting stories to kind of demonstrate how far the league's come from when you guys were coming along, like, do you remember any early kind of punk rock days of MLS that you were like, man, we're basically putting this thing together as we're flying? Yeah, and I, I don't remember exact stories, but just for an example of these, you know, you see all these soccer specific stadiums, beautiful across the league. And I remember Kansas City, we, you know, we were just for example, Kansas City, we we're playing in Arrowhead, a lot of big football stadiums to start. They were uh, had something going on at Arrowhead. So one time we we're playing at like a baseball stadium with real dirt. We're, we're in trailers like walk to the locker room, we're in actual trailers for the halftime, like 110 <laughs> degrees in the summer. Um, I mean, just like, you just look at you like, what are we really professionals? Like what's going on here? Yeah. Um, just, stuff, just stuff like that. I'm sure I've got plenty of stories, but just like how far it's come since then. And obviously, you know, big football stadiums, turf across the board, um, you know, no training facility. I remember when I was in Philly, obviously they were kind of a newer team. We were, taking buses to like a like a regular uh just park like with just a regular field and i remember one time we show up and there's like a like a family out there playing and they're like kind of taking up and we're like uh, i guess we'll go somewhere else so we drop them. <laughs> we're in like Chester, pennsylvania we're like oh okay it's taken it. like we're the pro team in the area like uh, that's fine we'll go down the road and use this other <laughs> random field um so just stuff like that you're wow. like 
Um, that's a good one. That's that's how it was. You just kind of <laughs> rolled with the punches at that time. So that's a really good one. Wow. Yeah, that, sure. That's a. I, I just love getting. And I mean, you know, I just have so much appreciation for all you guys. And you know, again, I, did, I didn't make it that far, but I played club with a lot of those guys. And sure, sure. Just that, like, I I, I told the story when I was interviewing Logan. You know, we both went to UNC Chapel Hill, but we both played for Elmar Club and stuff. And I remember bumping into them in between classes on campus right after they won the national championship. And I was like, like, what are you going to do? And he's like, I think I'm going to go for it. I think I'm going to you know, go for the draft. And it, yeah. the, the, it was very like, I mean, we'll see if this thing makes it, you know, like, let's hope it does. And just to see where it is now, it's just so exciting. But just to hear those early day stories, like you just talked about, I mean, nothing really represents it better than what you just said that, you, you know, you're, there's a family playing. So you guys had to go, all right. Like, well, okay. We all, y'all got it. All right. We'll try something else. Like <laughs> 20 guys, professional team. Like <laughs> that's wild. So, that's, yeah. That is really wild. Uh, well, I appreciate you sharing that. Um, yeah. Well, cool. Well, so I ask every guest these fun rapid fire questions. So we'll just jump to those if that's cool with you. Okay. Um, so the, the old favorite, Messi or Ronaldo? I mean, Messi all day. Yeah, I, I got gotcha. you. Um, left hard. foot. Yeah, just, he's, uh, I think someone put it to me once. They're like, how would you describe the difference between the two? And I'll keep it short. But they're like, okay, Cristiano's the best player in the world. Messi's from Mars. So. Yeah. Like giving Cristiano's props, but Messi's like an alien. Like, yeah. you can't never see anything like it. So, I, I love it. I love it. How about Messi or Maradona? Messi, I, uh, I mean, I think Messi's the greatest ever any player. And again, Maradona, I'm, I'm a little before my time, so I've seen highlights, but never got the full, you know, week in week out like Messi. So Messi. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Um, so Ronaldo or Ronaldo? So Cristiano or Il Fenomeno? Uh, I would say El Phenomeno. Nice. I would say he would be the closest thing, peak of his prime, and obviously didn't do it even close to as long as Messi, but peak of his powers is the – his prime, his tool set is the only thing I would compare uh, close to Messi. Yeah, you're probably right. Um, and, you know, this is one is tough because you probably know both these guys and have played with both of them, but Donovan or Dempsey? Mm, man, that's tough. Uh, Dempsey's my guy, so I'm going to go with Dempsey. Nice. I'm um, sure you know both of them probably, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I know Dempsey better, just like Region 3 and uh, yeah. Texas guy and youth national team stuff. No, no Landon a little bit. Um, but, yeah, Dempsey just uh, – I liked his game a little more raw, mm -hmm. a little more unpredictable. His demeanor um, for an American player was, you know, kind of paved the way for a lot of these young guys I feel now. Nice, nice. Yeah. Um, who's the best player you ever played with or against? Well, uh, Copa America 2007, our first game uh, in Venezuela was against Messi uh, in Argentina. So I would line up left wing. He was kind of a right wing, inverted winger. Mm -hmm. um, I think he was like 20 at the time. but So kind of just burst on the scene, but he was still Messi. You knew who he was. Um, but yeah, I've played, I've played Cristiano a couple times in these summer friendlies when he was with Madrid, um, Ronaldinho. But yeah, and Messi's my guy, so it has to be Messi. Man, just yeah. the fact that you just said Ronaldinho, Cristiano Ronaldo, and Messi, that's, that yeah. might be a topper. Um, that's unbelievable. Yeah. It's just, yeah, it blows my mind. Um, you know, again, I didn't, ne never made it anywhere near to the heights that you guys did, but I remember asking Logan that, and he was like, yeah, I played against Cristiano. And I'm like, Dude, we played up top together on the same club team. Like, yeah. that's insane. Um, but that's yeah, yeah. awesome. Uh, who, um, who, apropos to the name of the show, who's your favorite center mid of all time? Center mid. Mm, I would have to say, depends on what center mid you, you know, what you're exactly you're looking for. But I would have to go Zidane as nice. far as like an, an attacking mid. Um, but man, this, whew, uh, I was thinking about my all time 11 and, um, you know, the center of the park was pretty tough. There's a lot of good options. Yeah. Uh, uh, all personal preference. I would say Zidane, um, his his full career and, and things he was able to do is probably up there for me. Nice, nice. So, yeah, so diving right into that, what? let's hear it. What, who's your perfect 11, my favorite one? Uh, I had a couple off the grid, but um, – I love it. 
I'll throw a couple that I played with um, that I put there. But I would nice. say uh, it was my roommate with the national team I'm in goal. I'm gonna put Tim Howard. Wow. So I'm gonna go a little. Uh, I'm gonna give a shout for the American. Uh, right back, I'm gonna say Danny Alves, Brazilian. Um, two center backs. I'm gonna go Italian. One I played with, Alessandro Nesta. Wow. Uh, and then I'll put Maldini. Although I know he was a left back as well, but uh, left center, left center back. And then left back, grew up watching um, 94 World Cup, uh, Roberto Carlos left back mm -hmm. with the famous free kick. Oh, yeah. um, center mid, I'm going to go Little Barca. I'm going to go Busquets at the six. Um, kind of an eight slash attacking, I'm going to go Iniesta. Nice. Z Zidane at the 10. Mm -hmm. And then up front, Messi right wing. Uh, I'm going to go Ronaldinho left wing. And then... Uh, uh, I'm going to go with another player I played with, although El Phenomeno, I could put him up there. I'm going to go uh, Didier Drogba. Oh, nice. Uh, wow. I play with him Montreal and big game player. So, um, so yeah, there we go. Man, that's incredible. Um, if you ever get any, your, put in a good word and you get any of your former roommates on here, that would be unreal. Okay. Yeah, I got you. I can, uh, you name who you want. I'll reach out to him. Dude, so. you're the man. Uh, thank yeah. you so much. And last question, what's your favorite jersey of all time? That I have or just in general? In general or that you have or just in any? Uh, uh, yeah. In less, oof, Jersey, that's tough. Um, man. I like the, I don't know if you remember the old uh, German jerseys that had like the, they're like almost diamonds at the top. Kind oh, of, yeah. I don't know. I had, we had them for a club when I was like youth. Yeah. Um, it was like basically replica the German jerseys. Oh, I thought yeah. those were pretty Man, some of the old Italian Serie A jerseys are pretty sweet. Yep. Some of the old Milan jerseys, inner inner Milan jerseys. Yeah, uh, I got that right here. Yeah. Yeah. The Bur the Arsenal kit back there is pretty sweet, man. Yeah. Uh I'm sure if I thought about it, I could think of twenty that I'd like better than that, but just one that came up. So No, that's, that's what about, killer. What about you? What's your what's your well, number one? Funny, it's kind of that Germany uh, with like the, the the diamond, you know, is yeah. um, that's kind of number one. The Holland eighty eight, you know, is a killer one. The oh, yeah. fan the base Delphos. era, yeah, I love the Lazio with the the uh, yeah. eagle. Um, there's so many though. Some of the Nigerian kits, are oh always, yeah, always fire. So uh, all those are always killer. Um, so those are some of my favorites. Um, yeah, for sure. I. Uh, you know, I, I love a lot of the Barcelona away jerseys, you know, the, all those wild yeah. colors. Um, I love the Real Madrid uh, black uh, dragon one. I thought that one was pretty sweet. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So those are some of my favorites. But, uh, well, man, thank you so much for coming on. It's an honor. I was a huge fan of yours. You were a great player. I loved watching you take people on. And, um, I, yeah, I just I'm floored that you even came on, and I can't really tell you how much I appreciate it. Yeah, man. Loved have, uh, being here, and uh, thanks for having me. And um, I definitely enjoyed it. So no yeah, man. I'll, and we'll, maybe we'll uh, reach out to some of your even more famous friends. But uh, yeah, yeah. You yeah. let me know. I'll do my best. So no, I know it's incredible. But uh, give me a short list, and I'll uh, I'll reach out. So no uh, man, you're the man. I, I'll do you. I'll wash your car for a year. I'll drive down to Mississippi. No, no worries. But, Happy uh, to help. All right, man. Thank you so much, and uh, right. keep in touch. All right. Yeah. All sounds right. good. See you, buddy. Have Thank you. Yeah. Bye.